Yes, here. Miller? Here. We have a quorum. Thank you. We'll stand for the pledge. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Now we have the approval of the minutes from July 14th. We need a motion. So moved. Moved by Commissioner Spiz, seconded by Commissioner Markham. Uh, we need a voice vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. We have uh, approval of the agenda. Need a motion? Moved by Commissioner Markham, seconded by Commissioner Wiper. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. All right, now we're here for public comment. Anybody from the public willing? I mean, oh, well, not from a public perspective. <laughs> I mean, I, as it relates to the I mean, issue on the agenda, I know there's conversation about possible another issue. Can we talk about like for the group and when that is going to happen? Well, we're I think we we're going to do it at the end. We'll do it at the end. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. For other business, other right? Business, yeah, that works. That works. Right, never mind. All right. So now we'll move on to public comment. Anybody from the public want to speak? All right, hearing none, we'll close public comment. And now we have communications. Communication, we have one communicate, com yeah, excuse me, communication, economic development, business development division, uh, fiscal year 2021, small business administration, SBA community navigator pilot uh, program grant application for receive and file. We need a motion. Make a motion to receive and file. Uh, motion uh, moved by Commissioner Wiper, second by Commissioner Cavell. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. All right. Now we're at our consent agenda. We have one agenda item, the Board of Commissioners Tri-Party Road Improvement Fiscal Year 2021 Appropriation, Charter Township of Royal Oak, resurfacing of portions of North End Avenue, Bates Street, and is it in Men Menadove? Mendota. Mendota Avenue, thank you. Project number 56382, need a motion. Moved by Commissioner Cavell, seconded by Commissioner uh, Wiper. Is it, uh, I think just a voice vote on this one. Yeah. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Now we'll get to our very short agenda we have today. <laughs> <laughs> we have our first agenda item, Water Resource Commissioner SCADA Cybersecurity Update. We need I'll move it. Moved by Commissioner Markham, seconded by Commissioner Spiz. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Nancy Bash, Business Systems Manager for the Water Resources Commissioner's Office. And joining me today from the WRC is Chief Engineer Amy Plouffe, who manages our water systems, and Assistant Chief Engineer Drew Sandell, who manages our systems control unit. The impetus for this meeting is a water facility cybersecurity breach that occurred in a small Florida city on February 5th of this year. During that breach, hackers accessed the city's SCADA system and increased the amount of a treatment chemical to dangerous levels. Fortunately, the intrusion was witnessed by an operator and it was corrected and reported immediately. I'm here today to discuss SCADA cybersecurity as it relates to the Oakland County water systems we operate. SCADA stands for Supervisory Control and Data Acquisition, and it is software that allows us to monitor our facilities and control them uh, from a, a computer screen. For example, it lets us know if a system is experiencing low pressure or if a pump is not operating, and then it allows us to take corrective action. Today, I'll be addressing the Oakland County water systems we currently operate and findings and recommendations from the FBI investigation into the Florida attack. And then I'll provide a high level discussion of our security framework here at Oakland County. But due to the sensitive nature of the material, I won't be able to share details. And I thank you for understanding that. I'd like to bring up a map. Um, it was included, pardon me, I'm sorry. Am I able to take control of the screen and show my screen or would somebody be able to show that map that was included in the packet? 
show the uh, Nancy. Right click. Click on it and pull out a menu. Am I at the right click? Oh. Oh. Does somebody else oh, thank you. Control? That's yeah, perfect. Good. Good. <laughs> That's why. Oh, someone else gets control. That's right. That's the user. In the other room. So the WRC operates some water systems in Oakland County, but not all. The communities shaded in blue are operated by the WRC and receive their water from the Great Lakes Water Authority. Nancy, or, hold on one well, second, Nancy. Nancy. You're not, you're you're not sharing. You're, you're not sharing your screen yet. Can you? I think you have to click on. To oh, I'm screen. sorry. I have to press share. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. yeah. There we go. So um, the WRC operates some water systems in Oakland County, as you can see, but not all of them. The communities shaded in blue are operated by the WRC and receive their water from the Great Lakes Water Authority. Those, those uh, communities are very quickly Farmington Hills, Pontiac, Bingham Farms, Bloomfield Hills, Commerce Township, Kego Harbor, Orchard Lake Village, Royal Oak Township, and Wald Lake. The blue hatching on the map shows the service area of the Great Lakes Water Authority. The source of water for the Great Lakes Water Authority is treated surface water. Communities outside the GLWA service area have groundwater wells as the source of their water. And some communities have several large wells that supply their community water supply. The WRC operates community well water systems in Highland Township, Oakland Township, and Oxford Township. Many customers are served by private wells and the Oakland County Health Division works with those customers. Are there any questions concerning our coverage areas? No. No. Thank you. And I'm going to try to stop sharing my screen Um, keeps asking me if I, I'm afraid I don't know how to do that. Can somebody advise me? The people who overwatch all of this, can you unshare her screen? Why can't she close that? Should we stop sharing? There is. I can see where it. Continue while they do that. Yeah, yeah, we can continue while we're while we're trying to figure that out. If you if you wish. Okay, thank you. I apologize. <laughs> After an initial investigation of the Florida attack, the FBI released its findings and recommendations. Hackers likely exploited cybersecurity weaknesses at the city, including poor password security. Um, <clears throat> it was found that they were sharing their passwords with each other and using outdated operating system software. The hackers also likely used TeamViewer, which is the same remote access software that Florida used, so that the hackers could proceed unnoticed. The FBI guidance issued after the attack was to keep operating systems updated, use robust and complex passwords containing a combination of upper and lowercase and special characters. They also recommended that no one should ever share passwords. And they also recommended the use of multi-factor authentication or MFA as we call it for remote access. Um, you may be familiar with MFA if you do any online banking. You, you first log in and then you receive a text message with a code that allows you to enter to complete your login. And that's what multi-factor authentication is. The security model used at Oakland County um, is um, it's kind of twofold. We have our own security measures within the WRC um, for accessing SCADA. And then we also rely on Oakland County IT security procedures and practices because we access SCADA through their computers and our data is stored on servers located in Oakland County's data centers. So the Oakland County measures um, are uh, five uh, 
are addressed from five perspectives. First, there's the administrative measures, and those are used to inform and educate users on what the acceptable cybersecurity behavior is. We have security policies and monthly cybersecurity training. Our second approach is protective measures to help prevent or lessen the impact of cyber events. We use firewalls and antivirus, and those software packages are kept up to date. We keep our operating system software up to date on a regular basis, usually monthly, and we use multi-factor authentication for enhanced identity assurance. Number three, we use detection measures. Uh, we use commercial intrusion detection detection software, and they use security uh, and, and, and an operations center that provides 24 by seven monitoring of key security data. Oakland County IT uses containment measures to help prevent the spread of an event, and they use recovery measures to restore operational functionality after a cyber event. They use robust backups. They have an incident response plan uh, which is a formalized playbook for handling cyber incidents. And they practice these um, recoveries using tabletop exercises. Mm -hmm. At the WRC, we have the ability to air gap all of our systems in the case of an Oakland County IT network security breach. And by air gapping, I mean that we actually can take all systems offline so that they have no network access whatsoever. We also have the ability to suspend remote access if warranted. And then we operate at SCADA according to a rigorous security plan. All activity in SCADA is logged and saved. We remove access when an employee no longer works on the SCADA program. We monitor SCADA 24 by seven, and most access is read only and only a select few have rights to make changes. SCADA system training is required for all people who have editor access to our SCADA system. And in December 2020, we completed a, an assessment, a cybersecurity assessment required by um, the America's Water Infrastructure Act of 2018. That's the extent of my prepared text today. Does anybody have any questions? Uh, yes, Commissioner Spiz. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Did you mention that this happened in Florida in February of this year? Yes, February 5th. Okay. What is our internal protocol for notifying individuals that this happened? You know, do we have a protocol? Let me ask it that way. That if we find out <laughs> another community around the United States has an issue such as this, how quickly or what is the process to make sure that gets escalated, that people are aware of it, and that we have proper protocols in place to make sure it doesn't happen? We would immediately notify Infotech Security, which is a department within OCIT, Oakland County IT, and we would probably, um, we, we would absolutely um, follow their protocol, which I would imagine involves calling the FBI and Homeland Security and notifying them very quickly. Okay. It is the first and foremost thing we should do. Right. Is that a written process or is that just something that is ingrained in everybody? It's written, it is a written process in the playbook at OCIT. Okay. And we would contact them. Second question I have, with us yes. knowing that this happened in February, um, you went through a list of things that we do, but did we do a gap analysis within all of the sites to make sure that all that was actually happening? Actually, that is ongoing now. We continue to make improvements. We're documenting more things. Um, we, we hit all of the marks as far as operational and tactical um, uh, plans, and now we're in the process of completing our documentation. Okay, do you, do you know when that gap analysis will be done? When do you expect to be finished? Uh, I, I think it should be done within, within a few months. All right, can I request? Another quarter. I'd like to request to have you at least come back in and maybe give us an update on that if you could. Or Absolutely. If it's confidential, maybe we can do it a different way because there's certain information you don't want out in the public. Yeah. For that, but it would be it would be confidential unless we uh, unless we prepared another set of documentation for you. 
Okay, thank you. I'd be intrigued to see it. I don't know if any other commissioners would be, but I would. I agree. All right, thank you. Any other discussion? Hearing none. I appreciate it. Uh, we just need a, a motion to, or actually a vote to receive and file. So moved. Moved by Commissioner Spiz, second by Commissioner Cavell. Call the roll, please. On item number two, Wiper? Yes. Markham? Yes. Cavell? Yes. Spiz? Yes. Woodward? Yes. Miller? Yes. We have six yeas, zero nays. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you all. <coughs> and the next agenda item we, is uh, number three on the agenda. Our regular agenda is uh, Water Resource Commissioners Charter Township of Oxford Sewer System Operation and Maintenance Agreement. So moved. Moved by Commissioner Spiz, second by Commissioner Markham. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, thank you. My name is Kelsey Cook. I'm a Special Projects Manager with the Water Resources Commissioner's Office. And joining me today is Sarah Rubino, who's a WRC attorney as well. We are here to present for approval the Charter Township of Oxford Sewer System operation and maintenance agreement. Um, as you all know, we've been working on updating our operation and maintenance agreements between the county and our customer communities for some time, at least the past five years. So this is another one um, that we recently <clears throat> negotiated and had executed um, by the Charter Township of Oxford. And basically it um, protects the county. It outlines how we're currently operating. Um, it has, does have some insurance provisions um, it really has a better and more detailed scope of the services that we provide the township and clarifies all of the roles and responsibilities of each party. Um, so we've been, um, I think we only have a, maybe a couple more to finish and then we will have all of our operation and maintenance contracts across Oakland County with our um, customer communities um, updated and kind of in a um, standard form contract. So I'll um, turn it over to Sarah for a minute just to briefly explain some of the highlights um, of this contract. Thank you. Good morning. Um, in regards to the um, sewer contract, uh, the term of the contract is 10 years. It has an automatic 10 year renewal option. Uh, the agreement may be terminated for any reason with a 180-day advanced notice. Um, the agreement authorizes the county through the WRC to operate and maintain the township sewer system on a nonprofit basis. Um, and that's in accordance with the scope of services that is set forth in Exhibit B to the agreement. Um, in exchange for these services, uh, the county will be reimbursed for its cost and its overhead from the revenue that's collected and deposited into the system enterprise fund, which is maintained by the county on behalf of the township. Um, the township is responsible for adopting and enforcing um, ordinances or resolutions to set rates and charges that are sufficient to reimburse the county for costs and overhead related to the services. Um, um, the township is also responsible for um, expenditures for capital replacement of any system components. Um, pursuant to the agreement, the county cannot expend any funds from the system enterprise fund for capital replacement or improvement projects without prior approval from the township. However, emergency repair or replacement projects may be completed by the county without prior notice to the township. Uh, with the consent of the township, the county may establish a reserve uh, system for system emergencies, system replacement, or other purposes. And as Kelsey mentioned, there are standard and appropriate terms regarding liability insurance coverage. Um, I'm happy to answer any other questions regarding the um, sewer contract, if there's any. Any discussion? I have no. Uh, no, no, no discussion. Thank you. We call the roll, please. And item number three, Markham? Yes. Cabell? Yes. Spiz? Yes. Woodward? Yes. Wiper? Yes. Miller? Yes. You have six yeas, zero nays. Thank you. Next agenda item is Water Resource Commission, Commissioner Charter Township of Oxford Water System Operation and Maintenance Agreement. Moved by Commissioner Spiz, seconded by Commissioner Cavell. Good morning again. Good morning. Um, 
I will just briefly touch on um, the um, same terms of the water contract um, that's being um, put in place for the for the reasons that um, Kelsey had mentioned in regards to the sewer contract that was just um, addressed. For the water contract, the term of the agreement is 10 years with an automatic 10-year renewal option. The agreement may be terminated for any reason with a 180-day advance notice. The agreement authorizes Oakland County through the WRC to operate and maintain the township's water system on behalf of the township township on a nonprofit basis and in accordance with the scope of services that set forth in Exhibit B to the agreement. In exchange for the services, the county will be reimbursed for its costs and overhead from the revenue collected and deposited into the system enterprise fund that's maintained by the county on behalf of the township. The township is responsible for adopting and enforcing ordinances or resolutions to set rates and charges sufficient to provide revenue necessary to reimburse the county uh, for its costs and overhead related to the services. The township is responsible for expenditures for all capital replacement of system components. Pursuant to the agreement, the county cannot expend funds from the system enterprise fund for capital replacement or improvement projects without prior approval from the township. However, the county um, uh, emergency repair or replacement projects may be completed by the county without prior notice to the township. Uh, with consent of the township, the county may establish a reserve for system emergencies, system replacement, or other purposes. Standard terms regarding liability insurance coverage are also included in this agreement. Um, again, I'm happy to ask, answer any questions regarding the uh, water contract. Any discussion? Yep. Commissioner Cabell. Thank you, Chair. Uh, hi, Sarah. I'm wondering, and forgive me if I get this wrong, but Oxford is on water lines, not septic, correct? I could or is there a mix? Okay. We're on both. Okay. Right. Yeah, part, of the, part of the community has a water district, which is okay. supported by this water system, but yeah. the outlying areas are still on well and septic. Okay. So then those that are on water lines, what happens if you find lead or have to follow state guidelines with galvanized pipes? Does that count as an emergency? If so, what do you do? I can, um, <clears throat> excuse me, I can jump in to answer that. Um, we do have um, a lead um, line replacement program throughout Oakland County for all the communities that we operate. However, Oxford Township, um, <clears throat> I don't believe we found any lead service lines. There are some in the village, although we don't operate the village system, but I believe all of the properties constructed in the township are beyond the date where lead was typically used. That is correct. Um, okay. We haven't run into that problem yet, but if we did find something, we would replace it. Okay. Now, Charlie, to answer to maybe expand on your question, some of the homes that were built prior to the water system going in and are still on well and septic yeah. may still have lead lines in them. Okay. And so, so that is outside of the scope of this contract. Gotcha. Thank you. <coughs> okay. Any other discussion? Seeing none, call the roll, please. On item number four, Caval? Yes. Spiz? Yes. Woodward? Yes. Wiper? Yes. Markham? Yes. Miller? Yes. You have six yeas, zero nays. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Next agenda item, we have Central Service Aviation Division, Oakland Southwest Airport conduct environmental study, easement assessment for land acquisition and obstruction removal grant acceptance. Motion by, moved by Commissioner Spiz, second by Commissioner Markham. Good morning. Good morning. This is Cheryl Bush, manager of aviation. And this first item this morning is seeking approval for a grant from uh, the Michigan Department of Transportation. It's a federal project uh, funded in the amount of, uh, or the total cost of the project is $255,054, of which uh, that is matched with a 5% state and 5% local amount, which uh, brings us to $12,700. $753, uh, which will be funded through our fiscal year 21 airport fund. Um, this is a project uh, that will take place out at Oakland Southwest Airport. Uh, this is to conduct an environmental study. Uh, we will be uh, 
researching uh, obstructions in the area, trees in particular, and seeking uh, assessments to have access with some of our surrounding neighbors to address some of these obstructions and clearance to um, to obtain uh, the rights to uh, appear on their sites. Um, any questions on that? Any discussion? Here, none. Call the roll, please. On item number five, Spiz. Yes. Woodward. Yes. Wiper. Yes. Markham. Yes. Cavell. Yes. Miller. Yes. You have 60 A's, zero nays. Motion carries. Thank you. Next agenda item, we have Central Services Aviation Division. Oakland Troy Airport Re Rehabilitate Runway 927 Construction Reconstruction Airfield Guidance Signs Designed and Construction Grant Acceptance. I need a motion. Move it. Oh, moved by Commissioner Wiper, second by Commissioner Markham. Good morning again. Good morning again. Um, well, as indicated, this is a another federal grant with a 95-5 match. Uh, this will um, project will be a total of $965,592, of which $33,678 will be funded through the airport fund. Uh, this is for the rehab of the uh, primary and only runway out at Oakland Troy Airport. It also includes an update of our airport guidance signs. And uh, the construction will actually take place uh, this fall. So uh, unless you have any questions. Any discussion? Oh, Commissioner Cavell. Um, this comes from the airport fund, correct? Mm -hmm. Correct. Okay. This is not necessarily germane for this moment, but it seems like uh, these funds that we have set aside for economic development, perhaps if the infrastructure plan comes through, there'd be some sort of offset COVID-related thing that we might be able to consider later. I don't know if anyone else is thinking about that, but that feels <coughs> worth throwing out there we to just depend consider. On, depend on the definition of infrastructure. Right. Yeah. Right, of course, but. And with a small amount for the local share, I don't think that, I mean, if it was a bigger share, I'd get what you're saying, yeah. Not now, but yeah. just when we think about it in the future. Correct, Commissioner Markham. Yeah, um, as I understand it, um, you get pretty it. much the federal government wants us to keep these airports and keep them in good running condition, and they, spend 90 to 95% of the cost of keeping them up. And I think that if I could get that kind of deal at home, I'd be happy, so uh, I'll be in support of this. Any other discussion? No. Uh, just, just one question is, uh, so does this fall under the county's uh, contract, uh, the responsible, responsive contract, or is it the federal government, do they do the contracting and construction? The contract is actually uh, managed through the state because we're a state block, a block grant state. Um, okay. So it's FAA dollars managed by um, the state of Michigan. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, any other discussion? Hear none, call the roll please. And item number six, Woodward. Yes. Wiper. Yes. Markham. Yes. Cavell? Yes. Spiz? Yes. Miller? Yes. We have 60 A's, zero nays. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next agenda items, economic development, business development division, approving the reassurance of series 2010 bonds, Cranbrook Educational Community Project, City of Bloomfield Hills. Need a motion. Moved by Commissioner uh, Cavell, second by Commissioner Spiz. Good morning. Good morning. I'm, I'm hoping I'm coming through okay because I'm not an IT expert and I see up okay. So good morning. Uh, we have before us here a refinance of prior bonds for Cranbrook Educational Community. <laughs> the original bond was approved by the EDC as well as Board of Commissioners back in October of 2010. And at that time, the funds were used to uh, make several campus upgrades, but also to um, construct a new girls' middle school. 
So what's happening is 2010 is a long time ago, interest rates have dropped, and they are looking to move the original bond from JP, JP Morgan Chase over to PNC, where they'll get a more favorable rate, but they're going to extend the amortization on those notes, um, which really means for them a smaller monthly payment um, to PNC on those bonds. Uh, I've also invited here today our bond counsel, Craig Hammond, uh, and I thought he's from Dickinson Wright, and I thought it might be a good time um, if he just wants to give an overview of how the process works and uh, where we, the EDC itself does not incur any obligation for the county of Oakland on these bonds. They're issued, underwritten, and everything by the lender. So it was J.P. Morgan Chase, will now be PNC. So the credit of the county is not involved at all. Um, but I thought it would be a good idea for Craig just to give a little bit of an overview on that topic. Uh, so Craig, uh, take it away. Oh, but we can't hear you. Show's green. Something that is yeah. Oh, we can't hear you, Craig. No. You should be able to dial the number that's on there. Okay. Sure, if I may. Yeah. Okay. So while we're getting Craig on, sure. what do you? Mm -hmm. uh, Kathy, do you have the, the interest rate um, that when they were first issuance, issued in 2010 and what the new sure. rate will be? Yep. So originally it was one month of LIBOR um, times 81.4%. And then you took that factor or answer and added a 0 0.67. And now they're going to go down to, oh, LIBOR plus just 80%. So from 81 and a half basically to 80% and then add on to that another 0.55%. Um, so that's going down about an eighth of a point. But then again, that longer amortization makes that monthly payment even more palatable. Seems small. But for 26 million bucks. Maybe that's yeah, but over 11 years, I think interest rates would drop on that just saying. Well, with the LIBOR, maybe y'all are right about that inflation stuff. I think he's trying to call in. <laughs> yeah. Sure what as a, <laughs> yeah, as a side note, LIBOR as a as an international banking rate is due to sunset in, I believe, 2023. Um, so this refinancing also gives some uh, accounting for that, that it's going to move to the new system, which is going to be SOFR. So the rewriting includes that verbiage as well. Uh, and Kathy, I'm sorry, this is Craig Hammond. So can you everybody yeah. hear me now? Can hear it. Yes, we got you. All right. no, I'm sorry. I don't know what happened here. I was on, I have been on, and anyway, here I am. I think um, Dickinson Wright should buy some new computer equipment. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Um, so, uh, again, so I'm Craig Hammond with Dickinson Wright, and our, our firm serves as bond counsel to the EDC. And um, the EDC, just as a little history, the EDC's role was created to serve as a conduit bond issuer to assist in economic development in Oakland County for those projects that can meet the requirements in the Internal Revenue Code for the issuance of private activity bonds for certain types of eligible projects. And the benefit of these private activity bonds is that the interest on the bonds are exempt from federal income taxes, and that results in a lower interest rate and therefore a lower cost of capital. And the most common projects that the EDC does are projects for nonprofit corporations for their capital projects. So they have to be a qualified 51C3 corporation. And the EDC has done these projects for a, a wide range of private schools, and other nonprofits in Oakland County in the last decade, for example, Orchard Lake St. Mary's, uh, Rochester College, Detroit Skating Club, Detroit Country Day, Cranbrook, Marion High School, uh, Detroit Catholic Central, they've all taken advantage of issuing bonds to the EDC to help finance you know, what would be major capital projects. The, uh, these bonds are not an obligation of the county. There's not a debt or liability of the county associated with this. 
the EDC statute's quite clear on that. Uh, and uh, in this case, uh, you know, the, the, invest, the investors or banks that purchase these bonds, you know, understand that there's there's no there's no recourse or risk to the county. This is the county's just really helping uh, helping in this case, you know, nonprofit corporations to take advantage of this of this federal uh, uh, program that allows lower interest rates in their financing. So bringing it to this project, in 2010, the EDC issued bonds uh, to Fifth Cranbrook in uh, what was building a new girls' school on their campus, uh, new girls' middle school and some other capital improvements, but the girls' middle school was the primary project, and they issued $26,515,000 of bonds. And those bonds were purchased by J.P. Morgan in what was really just a tax-exempt commercial loan transaction where J.P. Morgan is the lender, uh, Cranbrook's the borrower, and the EDC plays its role of being the conduit bond issuer to, to enable these bonds to be exempt from taxes, from federal income taxes. It, it, you know, the Cranbrook doesn't have the ability to issue its own tax-exempt debt. It has to go through an economic development authority such as the EDC. And now, Cranbrook is seeking to refinance those bonds to reduce the interest rate, as Kathy mentioned, uh, and to extend some of the amortization. And I'm getting into federal tax law here, but under federal tax law, if you make modifications to the bonds and they and they reach a certain level of significance, then the bonds are deemed reissued for federal tax purposes. It's as if they're doing a refunding of those bonds. And that and because we're extending the average life of these bonds as one of the modifications, we have to have a new public hearing and and the county board of commissioners needs to authorize the EDC to go forward and approve these changes and effectively the reissuance of the bonds. So what's before you today is a request for the county to hold a public hearing in accordance with section 147 of the Toronto Revenue Code uh, and then to approve uh, the EDC reissuing the bonds by in effect approving these modifications to the interest rate and the amortization schedule that have been negotiated between PNC and Cranbrook. Uh, the EDC did meet on July 13th to approve these modifications, 2010 bonds. So they've already you know, uh, reviewed this, approved it, and now they're requesting that the county conduct a public hearing that's necessary under federal tax law for us to complete the transaction. So. So that's kind of that's the background of why this is in front of you and, and the request. I will tell you that the plan would be, you know, with your endorsement for this moving forward, we'd be publishing a notice of hearing in the open press tomorrow because under federal tax law, we have to give seven days notice of the hearing. Uh, and then, of course, the hearing would take place next at the, at the uh, board meeting on the 5th of August, and then the board would approve, adopt a resolution that's in front of you to uh, approve the uh, reassurance of the bonds. So I'm happy to take any questions. I hope I didn't go too fast. I'm happy to uh, provide any more uh, any more explanation about what the benefits are of the refinancing. But it, I would summarize in saying for Cranbrook, this is helping them reduce their cost of capital. We're I will say that we are very busy these days doing lots of refinancings because of the low interest rate environment, and this is just one example of that. Any discussion, Commissioner Cabal? Thank you, Commissioner Chair. Woodward, after Chairman Woodward. Uh, Kathy, I want to first say thank you for talking with me on the phone yesterday for like 30 minutes to educate me about these sorts of things. Uh, one question for you, Craig, that I think you may have answered in your explanation is it sounds like a lot of what you're describing are bond issuances to private schools as 501c3s. Is there an opportunity or rhyme or reason as to why organizations that might provide a different social benefit and be a 501c3 are not included in this, right? I think Kathy had mentioned Forgotten Harvest might have done this before, but what about Lighthouse? Yeah. What about other organizations? Right, so they are available. Uh, they're available to any 501c3 corporation. Uh, they have to be for capital improvement expenditures and frankly because of the cost of the attorneys and the sophisticated and, and the work associated they need to be for capital projects that are going to be more than five million dollars to be kind of cost effective to go this route if you if it's a smaller project the the benefit of lower interest rate gets eaten up by the additional expense and work associated with issuing tax and bonds. But we've done we've done lots of projects for um, for other you know uh, uh, Community-based nonprofits, when they're such as uh, Forgotten Harvest, uh, for example, um, I know they were they were considering that. Um, yeah. But yeah, so they're available, and and they and they are done. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, thank you. Others, we, we've also done some assisted living uh, 501 oh. So um, Lourdes comes to mind um, right. and also Straight Hospital. So those are just right. two fairly recent, like in the past decade or so. Thank you. Mm -hmm. right. uh, Commissioner Chairman Woodward. Thank you. Uh, Craig, this is a question. So there's no debt obligation. It, are we, but because it's the Oakland County Economic Development Corporation, are we, are, are we able to take advantage of our full faith and credit, or is it just that it's purely transactional? No. We're, we're just like, so this you, is you are not able to, you, that would be unconstitutional for you to pledge your full faith and credit to support this private borrower. And, and the statute doesn't allow it. Well, that's a simple answer. <laughs> okay. Any other discussion? All right, hearing none, call the roll, please. On item number seven, Wiper. Yes. Markham? Yes. Cabell? Yes. Spiz? Yes. Woodward? Yes. Miller? Yes. If 60 A, zero nays. The motion carries, thank you. And just to reiterate, the, the hearing will be August 5th, uh, 2021, in the commissioner's uh, hall there at 6 o'clock, or right around there, whatever time we get started. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I had to say that, just, you know. <laughs> right, right. Uh, next agenda item is Economic Development Veteran Services Division Fiscal Year 2022 uh, County Veteran Service Fund Grant Application. Needed. Moved by Commissioner Wiper, seconded by Commissioner Markham. Good morning. Good morning. Um, so here to present the information about the County Veteran Service Fund for Fiscal Year 2022. Um, the grant application is to the Michigan Veterans Affairs Agency. Um, we're requesting funds in the amount of $497,221. Um, the intent of the grant is to increase awareness of veteran services benefits and resources. Um, we're planning to use the funding for transportation program enhancements, advertising, <laughs> resource events and food package giveaway, um, temporary emergency housing, events for veteran-owned businesses, and a scheduling solution so that we can start scheduling our client appointments online. And that's essentially what the grant is gonna be used for. Um, I welcome any questions. Uh Commissioner Wiper, please. How, how are we on timing? I noticed that, <laughs> that we had to get it. I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. How are we on timing on this? I know there's some extensions in there and they're exception. Tell me about the exception about the application process. So the exception was um, we received the total amount that we were approved for July 1st, and the deadline was July 16th, and so that's why we're filing with the exception, because we just needed a little additional time in order to budget out what we were using the funds for. Since we were granted that amount of funds, we wanted to make sure it was being used in the best way possible. I, sure, I can, I can also yeah, share some here. Um, I believe there was also a modification into the original grant submission. Like I, I did authorize it to go through so that we met the deadline, and I believe that there was a modification to it to incorporate the things that uh, Margaret outlined that are incorporated in this grant. This is part a, in the last few years we've been getting these dollars. This, I think, is the largest amount that we've ever gotten, um, and that allows for uh, some, some things. And, and there's some flexibility that at, you have a certain period of time you must expend these dollars or have to give it back, and so uh, the department will sometimes We'll come back and ask for uh, a, a remodification of these. But I mean, we're in, from a scheduled perspective, the grant request is in. All things looking like it will be accepted. I, I am personally excited. It's something that um, the past uh, the past board had a number of conversations about um, putting uh, allocating dollars for transportation to help uh, improve transportation for our veterans community. I know that Smart is interested in partnering with us. Um, uh, I know the team, Ingrid and others, are looking at ways to help, uh, again, improve uh, transportation opportunities, particularly for our low-income veterans um, around the, uh, the county. And so um, I'm very supportive of this grant going forward and then us I, I, 
receiving the grant funds probably within the next 30 days. All right. Any other discussion? Uh, Commissioner Cavall. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I think this question actually might be f for uh, Chair Woodward. I, I see in one of the, maybe this is an old draft or something, or maybe I'm not looking at current version, but the transportation program says transportation to and from offices in Pontiac and Troy. Is that still the case, or has it expanded to include veterans' needs for transportation outside of that? That is a great question, and it's probably a question, I mean, I don't know if, Margaret, you can I mean, answer that, or, I mean, Ingrid, I know the, the goal is to look beyond that. Um, the okay. original grant application had that in there. Okay. Um, the funding from last year, because of COVID and everything, like most of those transportation dollars didn't get used and got repurposed to provide grants to, to individuals, and so getting a program up, hopefully, knock on wood, by the fiscal year, okay. um, the start of the fiscal year, uh, to, to look beyond just the beyond just the the transportation to the actual two um, facilities, um, but to be able to meet veteran transportation needs. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I can, um, just to give you a little bit more detail on that, we're planning to expand it to, so that it's not just to and from the hospitals, but also helping veterans get into our offices and getting to the vet centers, for, which is where they do mental health counseling. Um, so it's a pretty big expansion um, into a lot of providing additional services that we haven't been able to provide in the past. Included in that then is also veterans being able to get to the grocery store using bus passes and such? Or are you just saying? Yes. Okay, cool. Thank you, Dave. All right. Okay. Thank you. I don't mean, I mean, I mean, yes. Okay, cool. Okay. Any other discussion? So I have one question. Is there a, a career uh, slash employment outreach or program for uh, the veterans? Do we have one so, of those? So that's something that we're going to be, I would say that we would be developing as far as an outreach through our office. Historically, most veterans employment services have been um, funded through state funds and through state organizations. Um, so that's something that we would be using these funds to be starting some more outreach um, for veteran small businesses and employment type um, programs. That's okay. one of the new things that was added in that wasn't in our original draft. Thank you. I appreciate that because I think it's important that you know the veterans, whether they're They've been a veteran for a long time or a short time that we uh, do our due diligence to try and find them uh, gainful employment. Thank you. Yeah, we've always um, provided good referrals and resources and partnered with other agencies, but I think we're looking to um, sponsor some more events ourselves. Thank you. And then uh, one more, uh, Commissioner Markham. Well, isn't doesn't Michigan Works, our Michigan Works offices work specifically with veterans as well? They have a separate program to do that. So yes, I'm assuming do. those groups are, you're talking to them and. Uh, well, Michigan Works is only if the veterans reach out to them. This is like the veterans would be in the, our system here in Oakland County and they would know who all the veterans are. You know, so Michigan Works is only if you're looking, you know, like if you get on Michigan Works and go to their, their uh, location or what have you, right? Okay. What's your support? Yeah. Thank you. All right, any other discussion? Nope. Seeing none, call the roll please. On item number eight, Markham? Yes. Cabell? Yes. Spiz? Yes. Woodward? Yes. Wiper? Yes. Miller? Yes. You have six yeas, zero nays. Thank you. Motion carries. Thank you for your time. Next agenda item is economic development and board of commissioners appropriation of American Rescue uh, Plan Act local fiscal recovery funds for the sponsorship of the 2021 Arts, Beats, and Eats Festival in partnership with the City of Royal Oak. Need a motion. Commissioner Spiz, seconded by Commissioner Caval. Good morning. You guys sat down in tandem. It was like we, you guys we, planned yeah, it. Yeah, we, <laughs> we, yeah, we were doing this beforehand practice. Before You've been watching yeah. the synchronized swimming on the exactly. Olympics. <laughs> the synchronized <laughs> testifying. There yeah. you go. You want to tee it up? Sure. Um, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, members of the committee. Uh, administration is pleased to be here in support of um, this resolution, which would provide a dollar-to-dollar -dollar match uh, with the City of Royal Oak with the uh, rescue plan funds for the sponsorship of Arts, Beats, and Eats. Um, I think many of you are aware we have a long tradition of supporting Arts, Beats, and Eats. Um, and the resolution 
speaks well to the economic activity and the impact of arts, beats and eats on the county, Royal Oak, or the greater region. And um, you know, we believe this is a, a proposal worthy of your support. Uh, and by asking the city of Royal Oak to put some skin in the game uh, as well with the, the funds they received, uh, we believe it's a fair and proposal. And I, I would just like tee it up and to echo those points. I mean, as we look at long term figuring out how to use ARP dollars to leverage additional things, I mean, this festival started, it was an Oakland County creation. Um, it is the end of, I mean, it was the official end of summer uh, event. Um, as a result, over the last 20 plus years, I mean, about an annual like $25 million economic impact um, is raised over $6 million to support local charities, about $300,000 a year as a part of that. Um, last year, because I mean, because of the economic, why it, I mean, Guy House, I mean, found, I mean, found the intersection, how it's eligible for these funds, because of the pandemic, could not happen. It was just completely, I mean, for lots of reasons, lots of I mean, festivals and events didn't happen anywhere uh, in, I mean, in the state, really, uh, that, I mean, this is an opportunity to kind of get it on good funding. And we have um, historically provided, I mean, in the last many years, been, I mean, su supplying sponsorship for this. Um, looking to use these dollars to help uh, I mean, Oakland County restaurants and um, uh, in, in businesses that are facing a unique challenges re related to COVID to find the staffing necessarily to support uh, an event that will be great. But 200 local artists, um, it's a great event. It's a great I mean, showcase of um, uh, the quality of life here in Oakland County and um, hope we can get your support. And I think the one to one dollar match, I mean, as a model, um, going forward to uh, uh, get leverage leverage the dollars. Uh, Commissioner Spitz. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Just I support this in general and have supported our arts beats and needs over the years. Just my only question is relative to being able to use the ARP money for it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A, a deeper did. dive because I know you you kind of sure. touched on it, Dave, but can you a deeper explanation on how that is possible? Yeah, so we did run this past uh, Guide House, our our consultant. Uh, one of the very clear eligible uses is tourism, hospitality, um, impacts, uh, and as the chairman mentioned, last year was the first year in their history that they were not able to have an in-person event. Um, they did some virtual activities, which I believe we supported as well, uh, but this is, you know, and of course, as all of us know, people coming back out and uh, participating in public functions is kind of a new thing, and so they're, they're going to have to lean in and put a little extra effort behind it. Um, they made a, a very good proposal with some very specific things they wanted us to fund, and we thought a better approach would be just a general sponsorship. Um, you know, I think they're looking to uh, bring some food trucks downtown, um, support local restaurants, uh, and do some targeted promotion uh, to reach a larger audience. A shorter answer is yes, we did run a past guide house. Thank you. Any other discussion? Commissioner Wiper. Is it truly the city of Royal Oak, or is there a, is there a foundation that runs our streets and eats? Is there, is there a nonprofit? There, there, is a, there is a nonprofit. That's usually the dollars that I mean, support the, um, there's, there's Arts Beats and Eats, the corporation that does the program management and runs the festivals. And there's the nonprofit that raises a lot of the resources that gets doled out to local charities. So it's not a City of Royal Oak event. I mean, City of Royal Oak puts a lot of some of their in-kind stuff in. Um, I have been talking, I mean, I've spoken to a number of city leaders to say, listen, if we, if we're able to go forward, we're looking for skin in the game to do that. And I believe that they will be entertaining, really kind of moving behind our, our, our actions. And I think it really does lend it, it when we talk about how do we take these ARP dollars and stretch them for maximum reach? Mm -hmm. um, I, I think it's a good model. Yeah, just for clarity, the yeah. sponsorship would be to the foundation in a match with the city of Royal Oak. So per dollar they commit to a sponsorship, we will match it up to 125000 I was just going to ask that. So it's because mo most municipalities don't want the liability. So as events, events evolve, they establish nonprofits and foundations. Right. So yeah. this is, and it's it, all, this is going to be an up too. So we don't. Uh, it's an up. Yeah. It, I mean, yeah. The, the, really, put, put the uh, in Royal Oak's hands to see what their their skin in the game is. The dollar for dollar um, match like binds the deal. Yeah. And the, and just, yeah. Go ahead. You got the floor. We're going to this model. This is going to be a model for the rest of the county, right? So I, I mean, we should all tell all our communities that this this is as long as it's ARP qualified, we should. Tell our other communities to think about something like this. 
I don't want to make a blanket statement on that. <laughs> mm. well, uh, not, it'll be case by case, but there's. Yeah. This I have to go a, back to the fifth floor and see Hillary in a bit, so I don't want to, <laughs> I don't want to commit to anything. But uh, we are actually surveying the local uh, governments right now and asking what their priority act, priorities are for expenditure of their uh, res, uh, rescue plan dollars. And, and I think we'll be coming forward at some point to talk about how we can best match and leverage dollars and pull down other federal dollars and state dollars that are coming as well. Thank you. So, in, in, in the resolution, just I'm curious for Roy Lowe, it said we've, we've been allocated 244, we, we're getting half and half, and then here it says Roy Lowe received 28, didn't, didn't Roy Lowe, that's their half, didn't they get 56? No, they received about 28, okay. yeah. To, well, that's total, so they have like half of it now, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yes. So, yeah, like we got half ours now, they got half theirs now. Okay. So if it's, I mean, again, important. I, I think it really is important to realize that I mean, the, the event that started in Pontiac um, about 10 years ago moved to, uh, to Royal Oak. I mean, it really is a, I mean, a, a staple uh, event for a local artists. Um, I mean, really one of the largest festivals of its kind in the region. So um, it, it, it reaches beyond. Royal Oak's happy to host. I've been going to this festival in some capacity since the very first one in Pontiac. Um, and uh, <laughs> I, I, I look forward to hosting all of you. <laughs> do we still do in kind with the sheriff's department or, or some arrangement? So we no, we've never in kinded that. So we, I, I believe, and I guess the under sheriff taught me this. I didn't so, hear the question. All right, the, the, the sheriff doesn't provide in kind services. I think there's a contract if there's additional support need, Correct. and the costs, those yes. costs are fully reimbursed. The exception is Dream Cruise because it doesn't have a revenue stream. Correct. That's that right? not. It's it's not profit. Well, this is not profit. Right, right. So, <laughs> there's a ticket to get into the, in, the, this event. In the bank. past, I think, wasn't it Mr. What was the guy Wits. that used to run? Wits. John, John Wits. Yeah. So he was a for profit. And so the, the policy was if it's a non profit, we'll supply it. If it's a for profit, we run. Oh, Commissioner Markham, I didn't know if you were done. I apologize. Well, I, I would like to go a little bit farther on the point that uh, Commissioner Weifert was making because I was. <clears throat> listening to you do say this and how we're giving money to Royal Oak and for a festival and I'm thinking hmm we have India Fest and mm -hmm. you know State Fair. State Fair we out where we are there's not a lot of county presence so um, I think we should be communicating more directly to the communities that if you have these kinds of things we should talk about potentially partnering with ARP dollars tell them what you're doing with Royal Oak and communicate to communities like mine because a community like mine we're pretty you know we're in good shape financially and they think well you know we operate separately but I would like to see county dollars supporting activities that are going on in Novi or South Lyon or Commerce Township or Orion Township you know or whatever so um, go further <laughs> I think more right, yeah. direct yeah. communication to the CBTs <laughs> on this type of activity would be helpful. Yeah, and I think, I mean, I know that there's been a lot of conversations, I like, guess, planning on how to best leverage these ARP dollars. And like arts and culture, I mean, hasn't made it to the board yet. Um, I, I know like, Commissioner Cabella and I were talking about that. I, mean, I think it needs to be. I mean, it actually, the whole arts and culture space um, actually had a significant like, presence at the NACO conference because it's, it, it it very easy falls in the category, well, this is nice to have if we can't have it, and, and, and we, we should never lose sight that this is really part of like what makes it, I mean, our community is great and everything, and so it probably needs a higher pro uh, prominence. And I think figuring out a strategy across the board, like how to, uh, how to handle this makes sense. This resolution and, and talking with the executive and, I mean, and the executive's team, um, I mean, date sensitive, it's Labor Day weekend, it's coming, I mean, it's, it's coming, uh, uh, coming soon, but I think, I mean, at least as we look forward, um, but the, the nexus with ARP dollars is obviously being able to show the connection, like here's a, a festival that was decim decimated by COVID. Well, any festival that was scheduled for last year was decimated by COVID. Um, and um, now next year, is there gonna be less of it? I mean, I think, frankly, the economic impact of COVID is I mean, gonna obviously be different. Um, but I mean, as we look over the next like, few months, then I, I, for those, particularly for those events that are happening that didn't happen last year, we should, lean in quickly, but figure out broadly a, a, an arts and culture, tourism strategy that we can be supportive of using these ARP dollars. Commissioner ARPA Wiper? dollars, I mean, actually, it's ARPA. 
I, was, I learned from the uh, director <laughs> of the White House Governmental Affairs, it's ARPA, not ARP. It's ARPA. And, and just follow up on, I mean, arts and culture and, and, and these events, getting out again is going to help everybody's mental health get through. Uh, yeah, it's going to de-stress everybody and let us get back to some normalcy. That'll level things out and, you know, and hopefully help the sheriff storm and have less crime and, you know, just... Yeah. Commissioner Marco. We all need to get moving. Oh. Excellent. I agree, Commissioner Wiper. Um, but the corollary to that is I don't want to see us, you know, massive crowd all stuck together and COVID sharing uh, too. So how how is an event like this going to be different this year to try to protect us to the extent that we can? Because we all do want to get out, and we all do want to party, right. and hear the musicians, right. and eat the yep. fun food. No, it was a great question, and I and um, and I can actually have like wits actually put a memo with their their strategy is to doing this. So there's I think there's a few things. Um, one, uh, making space available for the public health department to be on site to actually do vaccinations for anyone who, did, who did, uh, didn't. I mean, so I think that's I mean in, in giving that space um, to do that. Um, the I mean, hand sanitation and all those types of things being amply uh, around, um, using it as an opportunity to uh, link to any marketing campaigns, because this is coming up as school is starting. So for those who haven't got it, that we can we can do it. Uh, the producer of Arts, Beats, and Eats also I mean, did a smaller uh, a, a local festival and uh, partnered with the county to give vaccination, I mean, have vaccination shots on there and donated free ride bands and other things. So I think that there is some ways to help promote the vaccination side of things. Um, following CDC guidelines uh, is, is paramount um, that, I mean, to I mean, the producer himself, but certainly to the community. Um, I mean, I, I've shared with the producer directly, like I am very concerned about this Delta variant, um, that if we don't hold, I mean, hold our, uh, our steadfast uh, uh, vaccination rates that there we have an ability to slide down um, I'm optimistic by our 70% number um, and then disappointed by our tri-county number below being below that so I mean there's a lot of work to do that but, but I mean spacing all those types of considerations working with our health department I know I mean talks um, with Leanne on a regular basis um, and I mean following what all the CDC guidelines are and if things get really bad and I mean I, being ready to respond to that. Uh, one other thing I'll just I mean, say, and I have to give um, the producer a lot of credit, um, he started convening these festivals. Like So when last year, when there was like, uncertainty, when, and when would capacity limits be allowed for outdoor events and those types of things, was convening these groups all throughout the state to, um, to develop strategies to be able to do that and was working with developing a protocol like, to, to run a safe event in these conditions. So they actually have a full manual on how they operate, which I think they, I know the State Fair participated. I know um, the, uh, the, the, um, the Tech Fest in Detroit participated, I mean, a lot, I mean, all, and all the major venues have, so. But I'm sure he has a lot more information that he can share to that. But Thank focus you. on public health is a top priority. <clears throat> Any other discussion? Uh, just a couple things to follow up with. Uh, it is by chance, could we get from the executive office the guidelines uh, on having mm -hmm. ARP money to use for events like this? I think to follow up with what everybody was saying here. Uh, and then just uh, for so you guys know is um, all the uh, Labor Day parades have been canceled, so there'll probably be a bit, uh, abundance number than usual mm. at the event. Have all been canceled? Just so you, uh, yeah, all, all besides the bridge, Escanaba, and uh, the small town in uh, the UP. That, to my knowledge, they've all been canceled. Uh, so just so you know. That gives me an idea. Um, okay. And then I, I support the event. It, me, me not being a vegetable eater, everybody knows me. I ate a brownie made of sweet potatoes and I actually liked it. Just to <laughs> preface. <laughs> but uh, if there's no other discussion, uh, call the roll, please. And item number nine, Cavell. Yes. Spiz. Yes. Woodward. Yes. Wiper. Yes. Markham. Yes. Miller. Yes. You have 60 A's, zero nays. Motion carries. Thank you. Next agenda item, we have facility management, facility planning and engineering, and sheriff's office jail carport project. I'll move it. Moved by Commissioner Spiz. Supported. Supported by Commissioner Wiper. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It's nice to see some faces in person. It's been a while. Um, 
Before you, you have the um, resolution for the jail uh, carport project. And with me is Major Childs, who can um, provide some explanation for the, the need of the carport. Well, we requested this really for winter time. We have our deputies going outside. Our vans are parked outside. They're uncovered. And we have to take time scraping off ice. Sometimes we need to get in those vans kind of quickly. Uh, if we're going with an ambulance, we follow an ambulance to the, uh, to the hospital for transports from the jail, usually for hospitals. Uh, so we wanted to speed that process up. And even if we have to take one out ourselves, we'd like to be able to get in the van a little bit quicker, have our deputies get in the van quicker uh, instead of staying out there scraping all the ice away. So to provi provide that level of protection uh, from the elements. Any discussion? Commissioner Spiz and Commissioner Wiper. Yeah, thank you. Um, my question is, why only two? You know, thinking of economies of scale, you know, and if I understand the construction properly, it's not, not being bolted to the concrete. It's actually putting a foundation in. So the additional cost for two to four is steel only. So from a percentage standpoint, it's probably minor. So I'm just wondering why only two? Yeah, so in antici anticipation for that question, I initially thought uh, Major Childs would answer that. But actually, um, lo looking closer at the plans, we actually did include and add alternate for a four car mm -hmm. carport. Um, what we had budgeted in the CIP, which is funding this project, was 51,000. And as you can see, the, the base bid that we received back was just over uh, 46,000. Um, <coughs> material and labor, as I'm sure everyone is aware right now, is, is not in our favor for, for, for building projects. Um, but the, the cost for a four car, which the Sheriff's Office did ask for, uh, the bids for that, that alternate came back, uh, a total of just under 75000 Yeah, and, and I do believe, Commissioner, that uh, by adding the extra two that we do have to put in additional footings, um, I believe it would be three because what they're, um, what is being proposed <laughs> is uh, two spaces here and then the two spaces not abreast but um, across from it. So, okay. so I, I believe it's one footing on each side plus the one in the, in the middle. Mm. I, I would have to double check that. It, it could be two if they're simply doing the outsides. But, but those were the bids. And, and you know, considering that our budget was only 51000 um, that, that's why we're proposing the two car carport. Thank you. Commissioner Wiper. Well, I had the same question. I mean, it's kind of a no brainer to do this. You need it. I mean, the timing's right, and we can do a little bit bigger. Well, and operationally do you at have the time. The space? Do you have the space on the ground? Mm -hmm. we, we do. We do have the space. Operationally at the time, we only had two vans that we kept over at the, in the jail parking lot. Uh, and then our further thought process was well, in the next CIP, we'll request carports over where we store them at circuit court. So they, there's a lot more vans over there. Any other discussion? Just, uh, just I, you, if you could um, oh. you can amend it at this time and, and do it for what you want. Uh, you going to make an that. amendment? Is that what you're asking? Is that an amendment? <laughs> I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't want to delay anything. I mean, if, what are we amending? No, I, I don't want to delay anything. If it, if it was possible to do four right now, I mean, I wouldn't. Uh, Is there need for I mean, okay. I mean, it sounds like we need four. We could use four, but I was happy with two. <laughs> Take what I can get. <laughs> How much is four? 75. 70, 75. 75. 50% increase. And the I mean, with the contingency, I don't want to. Contingency would be the same contingency. I mean, it, mm -hmm. so that, I mean, if we build the contingency there, I don't, I don't, I don't want to. I don't want to goof up any time you're in or bidding or, but. If you'd like me to comment. So the, the 75,000 does include a 15% contingency. Um, so that, that contingency, of course, if not used, could help mm -hmm. offset that. Um, if it was everyone's pleasure to pursue the four car, mm -hmm. um, you know, there, there may be an opportunity to fund that with uh, the miscellaneous line item in the CIP. Um, you know, we, we usually carry 100000 in there each year for things that pop up that weren't planned. 
Um, but I don't know if, if um, the further discussion should be, um, yes, four would be nice, and, and you need the four there, because of course the economies of scale are there, right? It's, it's a great mm -hmm. point. If we're willing to spend the extra money, let's do it now. Let's not add on later, because it, it's gonna cost even more to do it then. Um, but maybe my question is, um, is it needed more here or the other location that, that you mentioned? Currently, we could use it more here at our place. We could use the four. I'll make a motion to amend it to what's your bids with the four. I mean, that's yeah. so okay. So, the, how about this? Because we, I think there's three things happen. So, conceptually, I don't, I, I, I support it. Where is getting funded from, and is there any other use for that emergency CIP dollars and all that type of stuff? So, maybe the miscellaneous. You know, Assuming that yeah. wasn't already spent, <laughs> I mean, is there something else coming for? So, it may I suggest, but work. I mean, working on an amendment between now and the board to, I, I just have to work the whole thing out. If you want to, like, put it to go to four, but then we have to actually amend the numbers. Yeah. Okay. Well, I just got a question. If we if we might be having another meeting uh, before the next board meeting, which is possible, maybe maybe. That would work. There you go. Maybe our timing one. So if we have another meeting in a week, maybe we can right. sort this out. So that's uh, that's what we'll kind of think of that. So do you retract your amendment at this yes. time? I okay. Withdraw that amendment. All right. Then so then motion. Are oh, you making a motion. motion to set aside until the next meeting? Week next week's meeting. Until the next committee meeting. Yeah, I'll make a motion. We table this for our next uh, next meeting, which will be before the next board meeting. And I think that may be the only delay. Right? There was a, a concern about not wanting to delay the project. But like I mentioned, when we when we um, had the drawings completed, the engineering drawings completed, we included the four carport so that we could get that alternate bit. So so the plans exist. It's not like we have to spend more time going back to the drawing board. We could simply approve a contract for the four that's already been designed. Excellent. That's so that's there we go. So I think it's, yeah, I work, I mean, I mean get the appropriate uh, work with staff to get the appropriate budget amendment to it and can move along. So it's been moved and supported the table, yeah, to the, the motion to the next committee meeting. I'm sorry, who's supporting? Uh, Commissioner Spitz. So we'll do a roll call vote on that. Um, the motion to postpone item number 10. No, no, not, not to postpone the 10, to postpone the amendment. No, 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 the whole thing. Oh, the, oh, the whole thing. thing. The whole, the whole thing. thing. Well, because, yeah, okay. you move, if you well, hold on. Before we postpone, I just have one question. I just want to, before we postpone, because I want to ask this next meeting, did we consider any kind of heating in this area? Because if you're, you know, like you're, you're dealing with inmates, you know, going in and out, you know, I'm sure the uh, deputies get cold out there, right? And the elements, it's good to be protected, but I'm just asking if it was considered. No, not, not at this area, because it's in the parking lot. Usually when okay. we bring the inmates out there in the Sally Port, it's a little bit warmer in there. Okay. Perfect. All right, now proceed. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> On motion to postpone this item, Spiz. Yes. Woodward. Yes. Wiper. Yes. Markham. Yes. Cabell. Yes. Miller. Yes. You have six yeas, zero nays. All right, thank you. It's been postponed, and uh, thank you, Major, for your service, too. Thank you. Yeah, appreciate it. May I ask something real quick? Sure. Okay. Uh, Mr. Joss, right? Yes. Uh, could I... Uh, this, I think, will come up when we do the budget stuff today later, but I'd love to learn more about a competitive bid process and what, if anything, you do about veteran-owned, minority-owned, women-owned businesses, just okay. as a future thing, so when you come back awesome. about this. Yeah. Okay. All right, so now we have the next agenda item is facility management, facilities planning, engineering, and probate courts, cool. East Wing Employee okay. Entrance Stair Replacement Project. Need a mo move by Commissioner Wiper. All support. Support by Commissioner Spiz. Good morning. All right, good morning again. So on the north end of the um, courthouse east wing, uh, which would be the, the, um, the northwest parking lot, mm -hmm. um, there's currently a stairway there. It's a very large stairway, very wide, um, two levels, and it is um, in need of repair. So as part of this project, uh, we would be uh, completely removing what exists, um, replacing with new concrete stairs and heart, uh, handrails and guardrails. And, and then um, in addition to what exists, 
we will be adding uh, an ADA, uh, an accessible ramp. And with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. Commissioner Space. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. You mentioned it's in need of repair. Is it in repair or replacement? Thank you, good catch. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I should have chose my words a little bit care more carefully, but it is in need of replacement. Okay, yeah, it, it, it's, a, it's our typical situation where um, the salt in the water has penetrated the concrete enough to get to the rebar, and the rebar is rusting and expanding and, mm -hmm. and busting up the concrete. So um, it, in, in this case, it, it's a tear out and replace. Yeah, thank you. He did that with a resolution last week. Any other discussion? He keeps me on my toes. I appreciate <laughs> it. Right. No other discussion. And, wait, wait, and I, I'm just not familiar with this. Is this, you say this is the employee entrance? I mean, this is, I mean, the, for, for the courthouse? Uh, for the probate? Yes. Court folks? Yep. So um, if you, there may not be a map attached to this one, but, but there should have been one to the previous resolution. Um, it is so where the um, where the drive is to go into the judge's well it would be to the north of that that lot and it's that entrance going into the north side of the east wing so it's the judges yes this is the judges staircase so there may be other staff that use it. Oh, there is it's a, the judges. There is a deputy that sits there, um, but yes, the judges. The judges use it. I'm not, not going to hate on the judges. Like, yeah. We're going to call it the replace the stairs for the judges stairwell. Right. No, it's employees too. Okay. It's employees. Oh, there yeah. are employees. Okay. The employees too, but yes, the judges. Got it. That, that is where reserve parking is for. This the makes judges. all the sense of the calls I've gotten from some judges about yeah. their stairwell. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. And now it all comes together. And now the stars have aligned. Uh, just uh, if there are any other discussion, uh, no. I just have a question. This goes through the county's bidding process, correct? Correct. Yes. Correct. All right. Yep. Uh, thank you. Call the roll, please. On item number eleven, Woodward. Yes. Wiper. Yes. Markham. Yes. Cavell. Yes. Spiz. Yes. Miller. Yes. <coughs> Six days, zero nays. Motion carries. Thank you. Next agenda item is facility management, facilities maintenance, and operation jail sprinkler head replacement project. Need a motion? Moved by Commissioner Spiz, second by Commissioner Markham. Good morning. Good morning, uh, Commissioners. Uh, Joe Murphy, Manager of Facilities Management here with uh, Sean Hunt. He's our facilities uh, planner. And the resolution before you today was part of our 2021 CIP projects, which would uh, fix or replace 400 sprinkler heads throughout the, uh, the jail to be in code compliant. Uh, we'd be using an annual competitive bid contractor, Johnson Controls Fire, to do this work. Uh, total project cost was 39,352 uh, with a $5,133 contingency. Uh, so we're seeking approval to move ahead with this project and we're uh, willing and ready to answer any questions you may have on this project. Any discussion? Commissioner Wiper. Just when I, when I started reading this um, the other day, and I said 400 sprinkle heads, that's going to cost a fortune. And, and then, you know, when it came down, it's $39,000. I mean, it just seems labor and material that's, I mean, is that all it is for sprinkler heads? Yes, sir. Um, let's see. Onward, we got the dollar breakdown per head. In the red here, uh, 330 upright sprinkler heads at a cost about uh, $8.53. Installed? Uh, it was installed, right? No, that's per head. So we got the whole breakdown here on heads and labor. Uh, there were 208 hours of labor to do the work at $125 an hour. And then any additional that might come up, it was uh, installed 73.59, and the institutional heads were like $216.42. And yeah, I appreciate it. I just it surprised me that it's, it's so reasonable. Yep, that's um, my sentiments exactly. But uh, this company is very familiar with the the work that needs to be done and the locations of all the heads. 
Uh, Commissioner Space. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm in full support of this, but just clarification for everybody on the, in the room um, or possibly watching. Um, how old are these heads? They are 49 years old. Uh, NFP A25 requires uh, at 50 years that you either do a 10% uh, check of those heads, which means you pull them off and pressure test those tests. And if one fails, you have to do the whole the whole system that that are at that age. So that's why we decided to not take the chance. Just go ahead and fix, you know, replace all those 400 heads now. Thank you. You answered both my questions. <laughs> Any other discussion? Seeing none, call the roll, please. Okay. On item number 12, Wiper. Yes. Markham? Yes. Cavell? Yes. Spiz? Yes. Woodward? Yes. Miller? Yes. You have six yeas, zero nays. Motion carries. Thank you. Now we have our... Yeah, thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you. Now, next agenda item, facility management approval and acceptance of purchase agreements to sell county-owned property on Brown Road. Uh, amendment number one. Commissioner Spiz moves it. Commissioner Wiper supports it. Good morning. 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 Morning, Commissioner. It's Paul Dacos, property manager for facilities. Hope everyone's doing well this morning. This uh, is a... Uh, um, an amendment to the purchase agreement. So if we go back and uh, to, to give you an update, the purchase agreement was signed in March uh, 25th of this year. It went, it went through purchasing and the highest bidder was uh, was the General Development Corporation. So D General Development uh, we was signed, the purchase agreement was signed. So they had it under contract. Uh, they had went into due diligence. <clears throat> they had 90 days of due diligence. They also had a provision to uh, extend that, which they did uh, to July 31st. Uh, so the um, purchaser, which is General Development, came back with uh, extraordinary costs or, or costs that probably were not anticipated, and they asked for a reduction in the purchase price. So. Purchase price uh, going from four million one thousand, which which was the original bid, is now being amended uh, with this amendment to the purchase agreement to three million seven. So the the buyer again, General Villain, is uh, willing to close. They went through all of their due diligence in detail. They found uh, certain items and listed in that memo that, that you see attached, and uh, that's the reason for asking for uh, a reduction in the purchase agreement. This, this type of uh, situation is, is quite common in commercial real estate, where a developer or uh, a commercial buyer uh, looks at property and until they do all their investigation, they don't know the costs. So that's what the due diligence is for. And once they uh, determine their costs, then they have to make a business decision uh, as to what that means to them. And in this case, um, they they said uh, they're willing to purchase or go through with the closing um, at this price. Now, that price is still above the uh, second competing bid, which was $3 million. Five. So uh, administration looked at this, uh, facilities real estate team looked at this, and we consider this to be reasonable, and we'd like uh, the board to approve this amendment. Is there any questions? Commissioner Wiper. Well, I appreciate you doing all, all this work on this. I mean, it, it seems that they asked for they asked for a lot, and then you you determined that two of the things that might not have been obvious or discoverable in the beginning, the the uh, sewer line that wasn't marked, and the asbestos. So. It's, it seems like you did a good job negotiating with them, and you think it's reasonable. And they they asked for three million. They asked for reduction to three million five sixty five. We we uh, worked out uh, in a negotiation and, and came up with what we thought was more reasonable at three million seven. Okay, I appreciate that. Commissioner Space. So the three million seven is more of a negotiated price. It doesn't really tie to any of the seven or eight items that they listed here, correct? Right. It's pretty much um, taking 
it's not a dollar for dollar uh, list. It's more or less, hey, we have these costs. Um, we're, you know, this is affecting their purchase. Um, so, yeah, it's not a dollar for dollar uh, reduction. It's it's a negotiated thing. All right, because I mean, looking at some of these, I would expect them to know. 90% of what's on that list they should have known at thinking. the time they put the bid in personally. Yeah. That's how I look at it. You know, curb cuts, that's that's their development. They should know what they're going to plan to do. But um, Paul, do you want me to jump in and just say we, a lot well, of those, my oh, my mic, is my mic yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Pull it closer. That's why we came up with the 300,000. We looked at the easement that went across this, like Commissioner Wipert said, the easement that went across the center of the property, which we wouldn't record it because it was our easement and you know, at the time, and so they wouldn't have known of known of it in the asbestos at the time. The rest of the things we thought were a little um, over the top. Hello. Like you said, like n the fence, the demolition of the buildings, they're, they're there, they're there. You see them, you know, you have to add a new curb cut, so you know that. No if I may. Yeah. Just to, on your point on the easement, there's also, that isn't there's also, registered uh, From, what, Go, Paul. Oh. I was going to say, uh, if you remember, uh, there's also costs from DTE and from curb cuts and those types of things. They don't specifically know what those costs are until they have a plan or a preliminary. And those uh, those prices came back for that developer. Um, you know, they have an estimate, but then they get an actual, and he indicated those were quite high. Again, those are on the developer, of course. I, I agree with that. Um, but, but overall, we're just, we're looking at this and we're saying this still seems very reasonable. Uh, it's higher than the last, than the other competing bid. If we let this go and took the other bid, that would be less. So it still makes sense to take this and move forward. Commissioner White. I mean, I'm I'm for this, but it it's it's going to happen, right? Uh, the only the only contingency is the road commission given uh, given their easement or given their permission, and but is, is and we're given a little time for that. But is that likely? I mean, what's the? Uh, I have not it, talked to the road commission's attorney in the last couple of weeks, so I don't know exactly where they are with that easement. Um, you know, for that, so we'd, we'd have to follow up. But we, we're giving them 90 days, so after the end of 90 days, if they don't have anything from the road commission, then we can, you know, we control our own destiny. That's the way the amendment's written. Just to follow up, but from the site, I mean, it's a giant site, does, I mean, is there any obvious reason the road commission would have a problem with it? I mean, is that, well, was, this unfor wanna... was it unforeseen that the road commission is not going to have room to grant some kind of easement. Do you well, want to go what, into details? Okay. What happened was a long time ago when uh, Brown Road was was redeveloped uh, back in the '70s, I believe it was, or '80s. Uh, the the driveway used to come in straight off of Brown Road. Well, it was redesigned and it came uh, kind of uh, perpendicular off of uh, off of the other part of. Uh, Brown, and that that uh, driveway, half of it was is actually on the road commission's property. So, um, so that so the developer is saying, "Hey, road commission, I need to have 100% control of my driveway. It's on your property." So, working out those details has become complex with the road commission. The developer is doing all that direct, and you know, in in the course of this, um, but he's been giving us updates. So we do believe the road commission will uh, grant that. It, we we've also told the road commission, if if this, if you don't grant this, and this developer doesn't buy this property, the county is going to come to you and ask you for this particular easement. So if you don't give it to the to the developer. You're going to give it to the county, per se, um, you know, with all, all those uh, requirements. So it, it just, it, it was as, it's kind of a strange thing that happened over a, a period of time. Thank you. Any other discussion? Uh, seeing none, call the roll, please. 
and item number 13, Markham? Yes. Cavell? Yes. Spiz? No. Woodward? Uh, yes. <laughs> Wiper? Yes. Miller? Yes. You have five yeas, one nay. Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, Thank so you. Thank you. Before we go to other business, I just want to mention there will be a committee meeting uh, August 4th at 10 o'clock here to talk about the um, facilities management, facilities planning, and engineering for, off, for the Sheriff's Office jail car port project, as well as the feasible study uh, for the Sheriff's building and training facility. Is that what you say, the third or the fourth? The fourth. That's Wednesday. Wednesday. On Wednesday? Wednesday. Yeah. Fourth? Okay. Oh. Ten. Ten. Mm. All right. And and the other item. Yeah, so I read that one first. Ten o'clock. Yeah. <laughs> Ten o'clock. Yes. Thank you. Any other? Uh, so now we'll open it up to other business. If there's no other business, seeing nobody excited to talk about other business, we'll close uh, the economic development uh, committee. At uh, was it uh, eleven seventeen? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Why was I going to say that? Go fast. No, no, no.